This is the firmament. This is the area where NASA claims to be able to travel, which is impossible due to the Van Allen radiation belt or the firmament. Oh, we get it now. Oh, fuck. The Van Allen radiation belt is the firmament, guys. That's exactly what it is. To say that the Van Allen radiation belt is the firmament is just ridiculous. There's no way that the sun is in the area between, you know, those two things. Also, there's no way that the moon is there as well. Like, it's just ridiculous. Also, on a uh, flat Earth, there's no way to explain an eclipse without a third planetary body, I guess, creeping up in that firmament little thing. What's up, heathens? How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, tonight, we're going to be looking at why the eclipse is a hoax. Or, well, we're going to be looking at reasons why it's not a hoax. In this video, we're going to be talking about the sun, the moon. But specifically, we're going to be talking about the eclipses that happen, the manifestations that happen through our sky at various points in the years. Oh, uh, let me guess. Let me do a quick prediction. Ah, uh, the moon is a hologram and so is the eclipse. That are coming up in the months ahead, also into 2016. But specifically, I wanted to talk about the sun. Now we have been told, do not look at the sun, ever. It is dangerous, it will burn your pupils. And this is where it gets very interesting. Well, yeah, people don't, exactly. They don't want you to look at the sun because you'll burn your eyes out. I mean, like there's a certain brightness that will fucking blind you. It's, it's just how our eyes work. If you get like a, an ultra bright light shining in your eye hole for a long enough time, you'll go blind. You would think that with the blazing hot sun, that would kind of make sense. But then we get into the eclipse and they say, do not ever look at an eclipse. It's like they don't want us to see something in the sky. What are they hiding? We're not hiding anything. Or we're hiding the flying spaghetti monster behind the moon. I don't know, but you can look at the, the eclipse. You can get sunglasses. You can get glasses to look at the eclipse. Like everywhere is sold out of them. You could go and look at the eclipse. Is it that they're trying to protect us? Or is it they're not wanting us to see clearly, truly, what's happening in the sky? No, I think most scientists would want you to see it because a, a solar eclipse is very rare, especially one that's going to be 100% totality in some places. Here, here where, where I live right now, uh, they've actually released the schools on Monday so that kids can watch the eclipse. Uh, they didn't have the funds to buy the Eclipse glasses, and so they let them stay out so that their parents could provide it. No, everybody wants to watch the Eclipse, and everybody definitely can watch the Eclipse. Maybe their lies would be exposed. We're told that the sun is 93 million miles away from the Earth. It, it, it is, um, demonstrably so. We're also told the sun and the moon appear to be the same size in the sky. The explanation is the diameter of the sun is almost 400 times the size of the diameter of the moon. The distance of the moon to the sun is 400 times greater. Therefore, this is coincidence. No, it's not coincidence. It's just how the fucking sun and moon work. I mean, if the moon is farther out in its orbit... It, 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 it's not, it doesn't have a totality like in the eclipse. I mean, do you not understand that? Like, I mean, there are non-total eclipses that happen all the time. It's a rare event for it to be total. I mean, the moon has to be at a perfect spot in its orbit for it to appear to be as big as the sun. There's never coincidence. And this is what we want to investigate. The model that we have been told is a lie. Not only has it been a lie, there are certain things that are in the sky they don't want us to know. Oh, what would that be? Third planetary bodies that descend above the North Pole in order to create the uh, eclipse? Is, is that what it is? Are there some alien fucks out there waiting to just go to the North Pole and sunbathe or some shit? Like, is that what it is? I, I don't know. It's been used before, so it could be. But there's nothing being hidden. It's just all in your conspiracy-lading cesspool of a head. 
Now, we've been told that the sun is extremely dangerous and it will damage our eyes. Solar eclipses are incredibly even more dangerous. Why the fuck was the moon like all all drunk drivery? Like that's not how the orbit works for the moon. It's not like the moon got drunk on some rum and then just started trying to get into orbit. And he's like, "Hold on, guys, I can orbit. I just get off of me, bro. I can orbit. I uh, yeah, I got okay, 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 okay. Never ever to look at them while they occur in the sky. This is because of the sun." <laughs> But what's interesting is we were told that the sun reflects off of the moon. Well, yes, this, the sun does reflect off of the moon. Uh, fun fact, though, only about between 3% and 12% of the sun's light reflects off of the moon. That's why you can look at the moon, because it, it, it you know only reflects so much. At night, as we see the moon in the sky. Now... Have you ever been told never to look at the moon? We know that's silly. Everyone looks at the moon. No one ever goes blind. But yet it's reflecting the sun's sunlight. Yes, at 12% fucking capacity. If you dim a flashlight to 12% capacity, I'm certain that you could definitely shine it into your eye for an unknown amount of time. It's not powerful enough to blind you. In the night sky. So this is where it gets interesting. Why? Why have we been told that never to look at the sun, never to look at an eclipse, but it's okay to look at the moon? What if the moon was its own light source? It, the moon is not its own light source. The moon doesn't have anything on it, in it, around it, up its ass to create its own light. It, <sighs> fucking Bible. But the sun and the moon were two different light sources and no it wasn't just the one sun this is i would love to know how it illuminates i mean it is it is legit just a small ball of mass it's a, it's a sphere of mass i don't understand like like the sun has reasons it's got like plasma and shit and it's got it's 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 a big old it's a big old furnace up there and the, the the moon is just a moon it's just a it's another planetoid body where i'm gonna stop and i'm gonna tell you a little story uh-oh uh-oh story story time people get get your beers ready and let's get drunk story is a long time ago actually up until 500 years ago everyone believed the world was flat and in a closed system with the sun, the moon, and the stars. Uh, that's bullshit. Um, it wasn't just 500 years ago that everybody thought this. I would say that probably, um, I don't know. I'd say that that would be around about time for like uh, heliocentrism, uh, or, or sorry, not heliocentrism, uh, geocentrism. Uh, that's a good timeline for that, but it's not a good timeline for like flat earth theory. Um, you know, the, the, the spherical earth was, was, uh, was calculated or, or not calculated, sorry, it was theorized in about the sixth century BC. Um, and then if you move up to about the third century BC, they actually proved it. And around about that time, it became common knowledge that it was an actual sphere. So, so no, um, it was actually about 5,000 years ago that everybody just was like, oh yeah, we live on a spherical earth. What fucking century are you from? All inside the firmament, as the Bible calls it. It's interesting that a all of a sudden, Copernicus come, comes out and explains a new heliocentric model, and everything starts changing. Evolution gets introduced. Everything for our existence, God gets pushed away, and yet the. Whoa, 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 whoa! Well, put on the brakes here, buddy. You went from the heliocentric model and then fast forward up to Darwin, like <laughs> those two things are separated by a vast amount of time. <laughs> like you don't just fast forward and act like one day it was heliocentric and then the next day Darwin was like, fuck, I got it. A way to kill God. Let's just invent evolution, guys. Let's get cracking. I'm going to run a Kickstarter and um, 
I'm going to sail around the world with this bullshit idea about how, uh, you know, I'm studying animals and stuff. And then I'm going to come back here and then I'm just going to pull this shit out of my ass. So that's what that's basically what it is. It's basically evolution is basically the uh, the self-filling water bottle of Darwin's era. Lies continue and people still believe everything that happens. I'm going to say that no. Not everything is the way it seems. Keep watching, find out. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. The world according to Genesis. <sighs> okay, so this guy is like a literal Bible, Bible person. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Wait, so there was, like, water on the Earth before there was land and shit? Like, how we know the actual Earth developed, I mean, first it was a big ball of mass, uh, a big ball of iron and nickel and uh, all the, all these other elements uh, that were, you know, mixing around in there and the, the lava sunk to the core and everything like that. And, I mean, it was a big molten mess originally, but no, 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 no. Genesis is like, no, sorry, but the earth was covered in water at first. God had to raise the land up. Oh, fucking excuse me and your sheep herders from around 3 BCE. Excuse me. 6 BCE makes it worse. Let, let there be light. And there was light. How did the light, like, what was the source of the light? Was it God? Did God bend over, make his ass talk like Ace Ventura, and then just light shot out of places? And God, God saw the light, light, it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light, light day, and the darkness he called night. That sounds like something, like, if, if you didn't know the answer to, like, that's how you would explain it to your child. It's like, Daddy, how how does night and day work? Oh, well, geez, baby. Um, uh, you know, there's this guy in the sky, and he was just like, there's the day, there's the night. And that's just how it is. <laughs> the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said that. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Let it divide. There's waters above above the waters? What? And seriously, you can't fucking learn Photoshop enough to, to, to create an arc and type your text on the arc so that it doesn't look like it's jam-packed in there, like a, like a square peg in a round hole? God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Are we in a snow globe? Is that what he's proposing? It's a snow globe, guys. That's exactly. Except it's a it's a faux snow globe because because you just have that little bit of a of, of water uh, that that surrounds it and it makes it look like it's a full snow globe, but you know it's bullshit and it's empty inside. <laughs> do you think do you think earthquakes are God being like do something, <laughs> honey? I made it snow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so heaven exists in the waters that exist between uh, the sky and, and the outer sky or something? And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. <laughs> oh, this is pathetic. <laughs> like, and God raised the land. <laughs> it's like, really? Like, we have, uh, <laughs> we have evidence, archaeological evidence that that is not how it happened. Like, we have evidence of, of uh, Pan Pangea, uh, you know, being, being this continent. And then, you know, we see evidence of that. Like, you really think that South America just so happens to look like the compliment to Africa for no fucking reason? Reason. Like you think God was just like, hey, hey, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna make these two look like they go together just to fuck with them. The gathering together of the waters called the sea. And God saw that it was good. 
And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for light in the firmament of the heaven. You know what's interesting? We didn't, like, our current calendar like our current notion of, of time and everything like that it actually didn't occur until you know the the, the roman empire um and that's why you know time is centered on the supposed birth of jesus being around zero bce so i mean it, it's quite interesting that god created night day times and all that when the actual earth had varying lengths of day and time when it was being uh, you know, when it was coming together and it was forming and all of that until it settled into a more stable, uh, you know, length of day being 24 hours, how our days, like how long our days were, was, was variant. It changed. Give light upon the earth. Uh, John George Anderson. Yes. Stabilized orbit. Thank you. I was totally tripping over myself there. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. Oh, be still, sheep herders from 5,000 years ago are telling us exactly how our universe works in a book that's been edited over and over and over over the hundreds and, and thousands of years. Oh, but this is correct, even though everything in the universe points to it being bullshit. Well, let me just believe this shit right out the box. And God set in how how did like like the god set the stars in the sky but you're not explaining to me like the speed of light like the like like with the speed of light being as constant as it is the stars uh, i mean they, they're billions of light years away some of them millions some of them hundreds of thousands i can't i, I can't remember how close alpha centauri is um but i mean they're they're pretty fucking far away and it's definitely not 6000 light years if he legit did this we would not see stars right now in the sky there would be no scar stars whatsoever anywhere we would not have constellations so th this is just bunk uh and 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 stupid god saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day You know, I love how, how there's day and night and everything like that way before this point. <laughs> like, hey, here's the sun, here's the moon, and and, and this was done um, on, on day four. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, up, 24 hours is up, better close my butt cheeks. <laughs> and God's like, all right, let me, let me go take a break. <laughs> and God said this. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens, in the firmament of the heavens, in the firmament of the heavens, in the firmament of the heavens. Heaven. Doesn't that sound like like the start of a rap? In the firmament of the heavens, and the firmament of the wicka, 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 what? Okay, I guess uh, I guess he's not gonna read this part for whatever the fuck reason. The sun, the moon, and the stars are located inside the firmament, not outside and out of her space, as we are taught in the public school system. What's outer space? Like, I don't think that's how you spell outer, is it? To Tote's not how you spell outer, so I don't know what outer is, but but he's trying. There is no outer space. <laughs> the space above the firmament is God's territory, and nothing can enter therein. <laughs> you gotta be VIP to get in the outer space. <laughs> Just makes me think of an otter getting up there. It's like, I have VIP eyes otter. <laughs> Primary because of the Van Allen radiation belt. The sun, the moon, and the stars are all in our inner space, not the otter space. Okay, so the Van Allen radiation belt is used heavily by these flat earth fucks. Um, basically, the Van, er Van Allen radiation belt is created by the Earth's magnetic uh, um, uh, magnetic uh, field. Um, it, it basically it traps these particles that are uh, going through space that's emitted by various things. Um, and, and it's radiation particles. Um, and so a lot of flat earthers think that you cannot go outside of the Van Allen radiation belt, which is completely 
bullshit. Um, the Van Allen radiation belt has weak points and, and points where it doesn't exist. But uh, to get past it, uh, like Apollo or the, the Apollo missions, NASA in general, what they did was they planned out their launches specifically so that they can make it through the thinnest part of these radiation belts. It, even um, astronauts now uh, have a certain amount of radiation that you can tolerate while being up in space. That's why you don't ever have, uh, you know, uh, astronauts going up for extremely extended periods of time. Um, not only is it detrimental to their body, but they also, you know, take this radiation damage. So you can get through these Van Allen radiation belts and it's totally bullshit for them to suggest that you can't. But they hang on to it by saying, oh, you can't get past them. Hmm, yes, we can. There are weak spots that we can go through. That's why it's so important for the shuttles to make their launch dates because then they have to plan out the next time and it could be months away. Oh, see, this means that the sun and the moon are much closer than we've been led to believe. For example, the sun being 92,950,000 miles away from the earth as they tell us it is would place the sun outside the firmament. No fucking shit. I wonder, so, so does that mean that the firmament isn't real or the sun is isn't really that that far away i would bet on the sun being real and really far away and the firmament being bullshit <laughs> this also means that the moon can't be 238,900 miles from the earth as they're teaching and leading us to believe although the moon it's much closer it cannot be reached because it's inside the firmament's protective barrier. I would love to see proof of this barrier. You, I mean, you could, you could conceivably, you could go out, build yourself like a rocket or a weather balloon or something like that, and send it above the Earth and have it take video. Like you could do it yourself, so that you know NASA's not tampering with it or anything like that. And you can see that there's no barrier above above the, the sky. This is the firmament. This is the area where NASA claims to be able to travel, which is impossible due to the Van Allen radiation belts or the firmament. Oh, we get it now. Oh, fuck. The Van Allen radiation belt is the firmament, guys. That's exactly what it is, which I can see how he's pulling that because there's there's basically two belts that exist there's a there's one that's a lot smaller and closer to the earth and then there's one much farther out the the thing is though is that recent studies have shown that there's actually a third one appears at times so uh maybe there's a third part of this firmament up there but i mean to say that the van allen radiation belt is the firmament is just ridiculous there's no way that the sun is in the area between you know those two things also there's no way that the moon is there as well like, it's just ridiculous. Also, on a uh, flat Earth, there's no way to explain an eclipse without a third planetary body, I guess, creeping up in that firmament little thing. This further means that the sun and the moon are the ones rotating and moving around the circle of the Earth. According to the Bible, the sun and the moon moves, the Earth does not. Well, fuck, let's just throw out all this science shit right now. The fact that we perceive the sun to move across the sky... Uh, doesn't actually mean that the sun moves. Like, we can look out at other planets and we can see them having satellites that, that you know, satellites being moons. We can see them having moons uh, orbiting around them. And so, like, that's how, that's how Galileo figured out that we're not the center of the fucking universe. He looked out and saw examples of it not being the case. <laughs> he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Adgar. And the sun stood still. I don't know what pulling a verse out of a holy book proves at all. <laughs> I mean, it's not like scientists just pull shit out of their ass. They have evidence to back it up. There's nothing in the Bible that has evidence. Uh, uh, you know, unless you count the Bible as evidence, because then, I mean, that's just circular logic. But, I mean, the Bible isn't evidence of anything other than there were ignorant people back then. Do you still think the Earth moves? 
Yes, I do. Uh, one good experiment that people could run to see that the Earth actually does move or rotate and all that kind of stuff is uh, if you get up to a high enough point and you drop some kind of object off of it, you could perform the uh, you know mathematics to calculate like how much of a distance it would drift. Um, of course, you would have to find some place that would have, like had no gust or anything like that. You could drop it from a high enough place and it would not land directly below it. It just wouldn't because of the fact that the Earth moves and when you drop it from that height, the Earth is going to move a little bit and therefore it's not going to land directly beneath where you dropped it at. And so, I mean, there, there's multiple ways that you can know that the earth is actually moving um w w without w without you know having to like go up to the iss and see it move i mean there are ways locally that you can see it <laughs> according to the bible the earth is a stationary circle according to nasa the earth is a rotating globe all i have to ask is which is the one that has pictures <laughs> pics or get the fuck out bro you know, using the Bible to say that we live on a flat earth or to really to discredit any kind of science is is quite ludicrous um, because like the, the, the hypothesis, you know, that is the Bible, um, if you could even call it that, only, qu you know, opens up more questions and whatnot than it actually answers. Like, of course, you get answers for like some of the big questions like, you know, why does the moon or why does the sun and the moon move across the sky and all that kind of stuff? I mean, you get those kind of questions answered, but then you're left with these other details that you just don't have any answers for, like the speed of light. If the speed of light is what it is, then we shouldn't see stars in our sky. They move the goalpost by saying, oh, well, God just created everything as it was with the light already in tow and whatnot and all that kind of stuff. Like some of them say that others have different ideas about it um but basically though i mean the, the the bible just opens up way more questions that need to be answered and nobody is providing any kind of good reasons for those things like any good explanations for those things a circle and a globe are two different things in case you needed a remedial math course to know the difference between globe and circle Here's your fucking screenshot. More fucking Bible. <sighs> a circle, not a globe. This is not an ancient map. We live under a dome called the firmament. This is not a Stephen King fucking novel, okay? That stretches. Th Great. And there's no disputing this because it's just. I mean, I could literally let, write down something that counters it and say, oh, no, God wrote this and it would be just as valid. Does that verse fit to the globe model of the earth? No, it doesn't, because that the two are are opposing opposing things like it, it wouldn't fit it because that is what the, the hypothesis of that. Like, it's it's not that you've got to like the globe has to conform to what the Bible fucking says. The Bible has barely made it on the scene as far as the earth is concerned. The, the earth, the, the Bible gets to the party and it's like, yo, bitches, the party just started, motherfuckers. And earth is over in the corner like, I've been here from the, this is my fucking party, motherfucker. What are you saying? Please, somebody go and take pictures of the Arctic wall. Like, not, not a rational person needs to do this. I'm saying that you flat earthers do a Kickstarter campaign to where we can send your ass to the Antarctic to see the fucking wall. We will give you provisions and a dog sled and everything so that you can walk your happy ass across the Arctic and meet an ocean. So I, I don't under... Do it. I mean, there's there's no ring of ice at all. I, I would love to see some flat earther go down there and like vlog the entire experience. Oh, fucking Christ. Um, for any of you guys wondering, no, the eclipse is not a hoax. It is totally a real thing. The, uh, you know, none of this video was true. Um, this guy's a dipshit. He's got a uh, degree from fucking uh, YouTube school of astronomy and astrology, I would guess. Um, I'm going to see you heathens later. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. And uh, don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, guys.